Right, I'm just washing this down with some alcohol and I'll wipe it down, but you can kind of get an idea what that's starting to look like. It's gonna be cool when we get it in. Almost there. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys. Top cowling's done, other than the oil door. So what I'm gonna do now, I had pre-drilled a hole that's exactly dead center with the oil fill. A lot of times you do a door, you could tip it forward so the wind always keeps it shut. The downside is when you're filling with oil, I'm not so worried about me, but I don't know, someone went to be nice and help me put oil in. They tend to want to put their hand up there to brace themselves and people break their doors off. I want to get the door away from any help that may be helping me or myself just screwing up. So I want the door to open this way, but if I forgot to latch it, heaven forbid, I want the door to close itself. Ron, quit dropping stuff. <laughs> I want the door to close itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the hinge line just a couple degrees tip to the wind. For whatever reason, the latch didn't work, I forgot it, the wind will keep the door shut. But coming at the side of the plane, the hinge opens away from you, you can prop your hand on it, set the oil on the side, pour it in, and not put pressure on that door. I'm gonna use this hole to make a half circle by tipping the drill, make a half circle, and then I'll go across, do a straightaway because I want a full length hinge. I don't like full circle doors with little teeny hinges. They like to break off. So I'll put a full length hinge on this side and the door will open like that. That's the plan. Let's get to work. the hinges pinch between both sides of the carbon. I didn't mention it before, I don't think, but the, of course the hinge line, I put duct tape on both sides and cut it right down the pivot points, right off the edges, and then layered the duct tape up. You want to make sure that whatever tape you use, you make it as thick as the carbon that I slid in and touched that tape. When I pull the pill ply off and run a palm sander and kind of go over this one more time and prep for paint, that tape is going to show up and then I'll just grab the edge of the tape and peel it out of there and then just barely crack the edge with sandpaper to the hinge, which is only now three layers total, 30 thousandths of an inch thick. So it's just a hairline. You can barely see the line of the arc of the door hiding under there. Doesn't matter if I could or couldn't see it because when I flip this over, you can see the door right there and you can, I can recut it now from this side back out the other. You can also see the hinge right there. I'm gonna take some alcohol, clean this up right now. But you can see the hinge right there, and that also has tape on it. So there's the hinge line. Once this all dries, I'll sand this, get it perfectly clean, and lay up the carbon on this side that is the shelf the door closes against. So hope that makes sense. It's gonna be a really clean install. Should be. Let's get back to work. All right, well, that could not have gone any better. You can see a couple of the layers of the carbon peeking through, but that hinge is now embedded between all the carbon layers, both top and bottom. So there you can kind of see the hinge line is now flush. And then I'm now ready to sand the bottom. All right, so now you can see I've got the layer on this side, the hinge is now gone here, covered up the hinge, and the rivet lines are buried inside. Uh, wouldn't even need the rivets at this point, but uh, they were good to get it in there, but I've got a mechanical and a chemical bond, and I'm pinched between carbon fiber, so that hinge isn't coming out. That is the door, you can see the clear tape there. So now what I've gotta do is cut the two ticks on this side. I left two little quarter inch ticks that held the door in place. I'll Dremel those, then I can push here, put a little bit of uh, a spreader inside here and pop that door free. Once I pop the door free, I'll put it back on this side, open this up, 
tape line, the three quarter inch uh, reveal overlap, trim it, and then we'll put a latch in it. So we're getting close. I'm super happy. There'll be no body work at all needed on this. It'll go straight to paint. So, all right, I gotta pick a little more tape out of here. A little more sanding and clean up, but to give you an idea how strong that door is, that hinge is good for 100 pounds an inch. I've got six inches there, it can hold 600 pounds. So that is going nowhere. All right, guys, I'm going to quickly make an air box for Scrappy. I'm going to use a piece of PVC pipe because I just went and found one that was, that was the correct size for a uh, filter. I already made this carbon fiber part. Ta -da! This is to separate the air filter so that the air coming in the high pressure end of the top of the pressure plenum feeds cold air into the intake and into the engine, but has a separation from the hot air on the lower deck, negative pressure. I need positive pressure, cold air intake for scrapping. So piece of PVC pipe, a little bit of time. I split it down the middle right there. The purpose of that is so I can open it up, put a piece of eighth inch stick down here. I'll just use a stir stick and uh, I'll open that up, clear tape across it, wax this part, put a carbon fiber bottom on it, then carbon it all together. Then to get the PVC out, I simply take the stick, pop it into the middle of this. This part will collapse and get small and slide right out of the carbon fiber. So that's how I'm gonna get it out, is just making the part that big, pulling the stick out, it shrinks, it should slide right out. That's the plan, the start of a cold air intake. Let's get to work. All right, so what I did with my mess of screwdrivers is I pried on the ring, pushed it in and overlapped it so that it broke all the way free. And you can just drag it out of the bottom. Some of the electrical tape, but lightweight, set of drums. Let's get to work. <laughs> worked out really good. I just left a little tolerance where the rubber came through so that when I installed this carbon fiber part we made, it slides in and expands that rubber and it works so good. There's no hose clamp and nothing slides around. This can't slide down. So once I put the hose clamp on here, we're airtight between here. It's compression airtighted that way by inserting this pipe. There's our filter. We'll get a new one in there. <laughs> It's a start. Let's make some more parts. Back to work. Okay guys, I'm now working on the upper deck pressure plenum. So I made some aluminum headlockers on the side of the, my Lycoming engine to lock the cylinders together, help with cooling. I also made a 45 degree angle ridge down the side to put 1032 screws down it. When I did it, I went ahead and machined 1032 by the screws so you wouldn't accidentally put in the wrong size. But uh, anyway. Right here, I bent the L35 aluminum. I left the film on it that protects the aluminum from scratching during manufacturing and shipping. Um, but that film is a perfect release for carbon fiber to come off of. So what I've bent here is these series of angles is the carbon fiber part I'm gonna make that attaches to the angles I put on my machine head lockers I made. So um, I'm gonna quickly lay this up. I do want to make this a bit thicker than normal, so I'm going to go ahead and go six layers on this because it's going to have screws that go down through here that lock it to the head locker. I got those screws pretty tight together. 
I want this absolutely airtight. Any air that goes in the front two inlets on Scrappy, I want every bit of it to only go between the cylinders and not escape anywhere else in the aircraft as that would cause air that jumps from the upper deck pressure plenum as the air comes in. If it leaked like rubber baffles um, that are on some engines, if it opened up and you got upper deck pressure to the lower deck, you're causing the air to bypass the cylinders, which gives you hot cylinders. So rather than rubber baffles sitting against my cowling, I'm making an entire airtight carbon fiber box that rubber boots to the front of my two intake. Absolutely no air will escape it except through the cylinder. So this is one of the parts. We got a lot to do. You know the drill. Back to work. All right, guys, I'm working on the pressurized plenum. I've got the top shape here. I splashed this off the top of my cowling and then I've lowered it down just over an inch so as the engine rocks and moves, the upper deck pressure plenum doesn't hit the top of the cowling. Now it's run long coming wider than the engine so I've got to trim this line back, put on the sides that I just made for the head locker that go up and bolt down. That will allow from the side of the cylinder head locker for there to be a straight edge that goes up and then transitions to the exact shape of the upper cowling. And the reason I did that, I want all the air between the top of the cylinders and the pressure plenum as possible. So that's why this has all the contour that matches the cowling. If I just did a, a typical arch pressure plenum, um, I wouldn't have this shape in it. And I'd have to keep the whole thing down the depth of these humps. So by making the exact contour, <clears throat> I could push it all the way up and get the most air all the way to the back two cylinders. So that's the most critical part of putting an eight cylinder in a cup, is getting air to the back. I think we got a good way to get there. So let's get back to work. All right, I'm gonna show you a simple little trick. Probably all of you use it already, but transcribing holes to a carbon fiber part, really simple. I just put down some masking tape used a pen, pushed through in the holes that I'd already machined in my head locker. But I used to use one piece of tape and you'd go to put it on and sometimes that tape can stretch. So real simply, I put down a piece of tape, used a pen, found all my holes, poked them through, and then put five more layers of tape, each layer poking a new hole. By the time I'm done, I can pull off the tape and I can pull, do whatever I want, and I'm not gonna stretch or change the location. So. There was one time I didn't, pulled it, put it down. By the time I got to the end, it had stretched the tape an eighth of an inch. So little simple things. Now you can see where I got the screws. Let's go drill it, back to work. All right, guys, so what I've done now, I've got this bolted down. You can see when I made this part, I put a re return radius on the very edge. That keeps no air allowing it to bubble between when this pressurizes between the screws, because I've put a return. Um, now you can see on the top, I've got this double bend right here. That's actually to make this really rigid because if I cut this double bend off, um, this upper edge being thin carbon could move while I'm trying to attach this part of the pressure plenum to it. So now that I've got this mounted, very solid, and <laughs> very strong, I'm going to go ahead and tape this part of the pressure plenum to the underside push these up till they all touch, connect it. I'll tape the backside. Then I'm actually gonna bond the top, even though that's gonna get all cut away. I'll bond the top side, pull the whole thing off, flip it over, carbon up the inside. Once the inside's carboned, I'll take my multi-tool. In our shop, we call it the cheeker cheeker. <laughs> There's no real reason for it. Other than it goes cheeker, 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 cheeker. <laughs> Rip the whole top of this off, feather the edge round, and then relay up carbon so it's carbon on both sides. So that's the process. Let's get back to work.
All right, guys, let me show you what I'm doing here. I've got to make the air ramps up into the upper deck pressure plenum. So I just duct taped the shape I want into the plane and connected it with tape up to the upper deck pressure. And then I laid up carbon fiber, and I know this looks like a rat's nest of a mess, and it is. But what's cool, this was in here. I popped it out. I'm gonna come on this side, covered in micro. See all these big dents and indents from all the tape? If I cover this side, which was the box side, with micro, and then I sand it perfectly smooth, it will become a mold. Then I go ahead and wax this, pull a part off it. It won't have any dents. There'll be no micro, no filler, a perfect part that I can then reinsert and attach to the cowling. I'll eventually split that to separate the two plenum and the cowling, but to get a job done, just gotta make a mess first. All right, guys, I'm showing you the grossest, dirtiest, messiest part of the intake. I wanted everyone to see kind of how the process went. After it bonded in, I covered the whole thing in micro filler. Now, it looks like a mess, but it's actually really close to being perfect. I just need to go through and now sand out almost all of that white you see. It should have only two to 3% left micro even visible on there just to get those little imperfections out of it. But what works really good is doing something like this. I could put it in a computer. I could model and try and get all these complex curves to work together, specifically the one that goes into the air box right there. It's going into a cold air intake and I've got the air actually curling around and forcing the air into the top of the cold air intake and then another ramp on the front that whatever air doesn't the engine doesn't need jumps the filter and goes to the back for better ram. And for me, I'd rather be able to look at it, tweak it, move it a few degrees here and there and kind of customize the shape. It's a ton of work, way more work. Once I've got it to this point, I can sand it out, put the last couple layers of carbon fiber on it. Right now it's only two layers thick, super thin. And then if I ever wanted to duplicate or to go into mass production, I could 3D scan this and then make a mold off of the hand shaping. I'm really happy with how it's going. I got a lot more work to do. If I did 3D scan this and make a mold, I literally could do this section of the cowling in probably two to 3% of the time I've got to get to this point. I have hundreds and hundreds of hours to get to here. And a lot of it is just shaping and reshaping and then pulling parts and then connecting those parts. Blah, blah, blah. It's been a long day. The sun is still out. I got a lot more hours in me. So you guys know the drill. <laughs> Let's get back to work. Hey guys, <laughs> it's my wife with the camera tonight. Lost her on a little while ago. I think it's coming up on 11. So uh, I'm not sure how much longer we're gonna stay, but let me show you where we're at. I'm still sanding. And I could have said that five times every hour over the last five hours. So I'm gonna sand. I gotta sand. Sanding again. And I'm gonna sand. And I'm gonna sand. And I'm gonna sand. It looks like there's still a lot of micro on here, but there's not. It's actually, I don't know if you can hear that. It's actually getting close to paper thin, but I keep working around in a circle and making sure that I'm blending as I go, not focusing on one spot. I'm really happy with the shape. I'm gonna keep going. A few more hours left to go on sanding. Almost all the white will disappear completely, and then it's gonna be ready for a final carbon fiber layer. I'll do two more layers on top of that. So. Ah, oh, we got at least a little more in us. <laughs> I'm getting back to work. All right, guys. I've got the intakes done. They're fully connected right now. And uh, I'm going to wipe it down so I can get some tape to stick. And I'm going to make the split line for where the cowling separates from the sealed airtight pressure plenum. So um, I'll get this wiped down. I'm really happy with how it turned out. The air's flowing really nice. And if you notice, just on this edge right here, I've got carbon carrying all the way in. I don't have what you normally see would be a step right here that the air has to trip around. That creates a little burble, slows down the air going into the engine, which causes it to run hotter. So I've made a carbon fiber uh, return that carries all the way in smooth rather than a lip. Then I'll split it. I'll put a rubber boot that ties the two together when I put the cowling back on and you'll just see a little hairline around it. And then the engine can shake separately 
from the cowling that doesn't move as the engine rocks and twists and, and vibrates, there'll be a rubber isolator that allows that to happen. But the air should flow better, better than about any cowling I've done. So hopefully we'll get those back cylinders nice and cold. My goal is to have the back cylinders on an A cylinder cooler than any four cylinder cow I've flown in. They all tend to sit pretty warm, um, especially if you're flat out, hot summer day, down low, 110, 120 degrees out of Las Vegas area. They'll get pretty warm, sit around 400, 410. Um, I want these to sit in the 370, 380 tops range on the hottest day. So that's my goal. Wish me luck. Back to work. curve I got a hi <laughs> I got to trim this off sand it back that little radius is for that the holes in it are for the nut plates and the curl on this edge is because I needed a witch's hat hold on <laughs> all right this is the pressurized plenum it's extremely light this hole is for this carbon fiber funnel we made and what this will do is this will permanently be RTV to the fill neck of the oil for Scrappy's engine. And then there'll be nut plates on uh, this so that this can come on and off and this will stay and I won't have to break the seal um, that prevents oil when I fill the plane from getting onto the engine. So it'll be completely tight, but basically what will happen is you can just open the oil door on the cowling and you'll see a giant funnel pull the dipstick out and pour it right in you never have to get a funnel and you don't have to worry about spilling an oil having a way to get to the engine so i um, super excited about that i've done that on race planes before i'm going to wipe it down spray it with clear you know the drill <laughs> let's get back to work <laughs> all right guys i'm super pumped other than I spent four hours nonstop sanding to get this to this point. It's just a lot more surface area than you think, but I'm really happy with the step here that goes to the pressure top plenum, the two intakes, my cold air induction filter box that holds the filter. I've got in beds for bolt points. Um, it's ready to get a clear coat, but this essentially goes right there at the front of the aircraft filter. And these will have rubber boots that tie to the front of the cowling. So I'm pumped, it's lightweight, it's complex, but it's done. <laughs> That's the most important part. Install it and it's staying on. So I'm about there. <laughs> Let's get back to work. All right, guys. Finally, this cowling has been <laughs> kicking my arm's butt. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? I'm kicking my ass, <laughs> <Steve Oil! laughs> And I've been doing sanding for so many days, but we're finally here, 100% carbon. This is actually all the body work is already done. Uh, even the final sanding's done, but you can kind of see, I'll do this in a high gloss black to match the stripe on the back of Scrappy that says Scrappy in it. But this will go right there, kind of get a feel for what that looks like. This right here is the fresh air intake. And I've got the plane lowered way down. You can kind of tell the suspensions down flat so that I can kind of work on it easier. But this goes right there. What's really fun about this is I can change my oil just by pulling off my bottom pan. So that goes there. My lights are here. Um, somewhere I've got a filter that drops in here. And uh, so the filter is out of sight, out of mind. It's no longer on the front. Double lights, the other drill. And then you can see inside here, the ramp going up and inside, there'll be a rubber boot on this seam right here between it, but all the air ramps in and there's no return edge that trips the air and slows down the air to get from getting to the back of the engine. The upper pressure plenum's done. 
pressure plenum goes all the way to the back of the cylinders and a lot of people dive their plenums right to the back cylinder and just leave a little gap for the air to sneak through those back cylinders that doesn't work very well and then your back cylinders get hotter than the front so i made a carbon fiber box that's about three inches deep um, behind the back cylinder that takes the air all the way down around the back and lets the air come in the other direction it just makes sure the air is flowing really fast to the back so my back stays nearly the same temperature as my front uh, also little tricks you can see inside this one you can see my little slots this is behind right here is the parting line of the cylinder this air is going through the grills here but right here that allows the air to sneak through and go through the fins underneath that cylinder so it's just little tricks to get all the cylinders to even up but oh my gosh i'm ready to put clear coat on the underside and paint on the outside so this was a way bigger job than I expected, and I have built so many cowlings, but I can honestly say this is one of my favorite cowlings. Now I've got two more things I need to add to this cowling before I can get it in primer. I've got to add more exit air. Now I've got the exit gills that look like shark gills I love from Cub Crafters. I utilize to kind of keep the same look, but it's not enough to flow all eight cylinders. So we already added a giant belly cow flap which is gonna pull a massive amount of air. Now, I still want more than that, so I'm gonna add two more exit air uh, outlets that are matching the inlets to my oil coolers on the back of the aircraft. So I'm gonna reuse that mold, flip it around, shape it a little bit different, and attach it to the back of the cowling. So there's gonna be multiple air outlets, and one of them is adjustable. I wanna make sure that whether I'm slow flight cold air flying with some of my buddies um, in I can close everything up and keep the cylinders warm or if it's hot and I've got 500 horsepower and I'm on the deck on the hottest day that I keep this thing cold so I'm super excited about it I really like the high sides and the shape on the intake uh, and then I tried it with the prop and spinner on and uh, these intakes actually look a little smaller when the prop blades are on but I love it I Cross our fingers, it does what the flow says it will do. I think it will. Should keep my cylinders cold, but let's get some paint on it and we can go out and run it and see how it does. Back to work.